Hello everyone, this is Pilot and welcome back to another episode of Mock Talks, the series where I build and review my Bionicle creations. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at all five of my current Matoran mocks, those of course being Terei, Hauri, Wavelis, Decry, and Gokrin. Since the same basic design is repeated across all five of these mocks, I've chosen to put them all into one episode. However, if you're only interested to see one Matoran in particular, feel free to fast forward using the timestamps on screen or in the description below. If you haven't done so already, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to get notified when I release new videos. And with all that out of the way, let's get started. Alright, so first up we have uh, Terei here, which of course is the Matoran form of my self mock. So uh, naturally he's kind of become one of my favorite out of these five Matoran mocks. One thing I've always kind of appreciated a lot about Terei um, is uh, his color scheme. It was something that I originally got from one of the official Bonacle sets that was uh, Holly Mari. And while Holly, of course, was a toe of water, uh, the color scheme kind of ended up fitting very well with, you know, Terei's uh, Matoran type, which is a Bomatoran. One thing that can always kind of be a bit annoying to do when, uh, you know, mocking is trying to find parts that'll fit a certain consistent color scheme. And with Bonacle specifically, a problem you often run into is with masks. Like for Terei, obviously the, uh, you know, he has his dark blue Kanoe Ruru, which is not officially in that color. That was originally one of the trans blue uh, Rurus from the uh, Nui Rama sets. And I then took that and had to paint that so it would match well with the rest of the mock. I know there's a lot of people out there who aren't always a fan of painting or modifying pieces in other ways. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes I like to do it, you know, sparingly just because it often winds up with a very cool result.
with not only Teray but all the other Matoran as well, I kind of wanted to make them look very uh, kind of thrown together and thrashed in some ways. So that's kind of why you see certain things like the uh, like the rubber band wrapped around the uh, the spear tip and the different uh, like cloth elements, like what Teray has on his his backpack. I wanted those kinds of like equipment and weapons to feel almost kind of primitive in a way. I kind of contrast them against some of the more traditional Matoran we know that are kind of known for being very technologically advanced in some ways. Like with the uh, the Metronui Matoran and like their disc launchers and stuff. In a way it's almost kind of like a callback to the old like 2001 Matoran who would always kind of use stuff crafted from the materials around them that they would find on the island of Mata Nui. I think that uh, Terrain in particular does a pretty good job at this because of one, just like the amount of equipment he carries. He's probably the one to carry like the most stuff, except for probably Gokrin. But that and kind of the, the asymmetry that his armor design has, I think also helps to make him look more, you know, again, like different from like your usual Matoran who are very kind of clean cut in a lot of ways. I remember when I first, uh, you know, built Teray, like, he had a very kind of hunched over look, and he used to, like, wield an axe and stuff. That kind of more, um, I almost want to say, like, brutish look is, like, not always, like, what I wanted to go for for Teray. And, of course, like, back then when, like, I first made him, I wasn't as experienced in mocking, so I, so I didn't exactly know what I was doing all the time. I think with this uh, newest revamp, which was the first uh, Matoran mock I made with this new design that you'll see across all five of them. I think compared to like his previous designs, this is just a lot more clean looking and just, um, I don't know, just an overall better design for him. Alright, so now we have uh, Howry here. Uh, like Teray, Howry also wears a painted mask. Uh, this mask has become affectionately known amongst my uh, Discord server as the Kenobi Kalamazoo, the 2A era with uh, autocorrect. But anyways, kind of like how I was saying before with uh, Teray's Kenobi Ruru, painting parts can help a lot to kind of, um, kind of fit within a mox color scheme without having to sacrifice certain parts usages. I think compared to, to the paint job on uh, Therese's mask, the one on Howie's came out a lot better. I used a different type of spray paint that actually is, um, you know, like supposed to stick to plastic. So um, one thing you'll notice about Therese's Ruru is that it has a very uh, kind of rough grainy texture to it from the, the paint. Uh, to Cry, who also has a painted mask, he kind of suffers from that same issue, probably even more so to be honest. But with Howie, because I used a different type of paint, it came out a lot smoother and it looks a lot closer to an official Lego piece. So if you ever do want to try painting pieces, I would suggest getting, you know, types of spray paint that are actually meant to stick to plastic like, you know, Lego and stuff.
Another technique I kind of wanted to uh, talk about as well, this was used on uh, Terrain 2, but on both of those mocks, one of the things I really liked was the way that I attached the, uh, the shoulder armor. Uh, because of how they're attached using rubber bands, it allows them to kind of flex and move out of the way when you're moving the arm. So it, it kind of prevents a lot of uh, potential articulation issues that can come from having armor pieces in those spots. One annoying thing that can kind of come from this though is um, with Howard because he has two of them on either side of him, all of the, the rubber bands kind of like cross over kind of uh, where his like neck joint is and it kind of has a tendency to like crowd that area and make it so the head kind of has kind of has a tendency to like pop off but um i don't know i think that's a pretty good trade-off for kind of the result you get with that armor Another thing you also kind of notice with the torsos on all of these mocks is um, while they all use the same general design, they have usually back armor that's very different. And basically the point of that is just to make uh, each Matoran feel more unique and also give them a different silhouette. With Howard, I wanted to make him look very kind of bulky and more buff in a way compared to uh, the other Matoran. So I kind of tried to give him armor and whatnot that kind of helped to bulk him out a bit more. And now uh, one kind of last thing I wanted to mention while we do the uh, the final assembly on Howry here are the uh, the use of the, the tire pieces that kind of fill in the, the arms. Not all of the Matorn use this just because they all, um, or some of them have different uh, arm builds. They use different CCBS joints that don't really have the, the room for those tire pieces. However, on uh, Howry, Teray, and Gokrin, they all use this. And um, aside from just kind of helping to like fill in the joint, make it look more uh, I guess uniform in a way and also kind of looks like I don't know little pieces of like muscle that are ingrained in the Matoran which kind of fits from a in-universe perspective because of course the Matoran are 
you know, mostly mechanical, but they also have small organic portions as well. And now here we have Wivalis. Um, with Wivalis's design, I kind of wanted to make her look a bit more uh, kind of basic in a way compared to the other Matorn, since in her backstory she's kind of meant to be a uh, kind of a newcomer to the village that all these Matorn come from. So I kind of wanted to find different ways I could kind of express that through her design. You'll notice that like compared to the other Matorn, her weapon is very basic. It's just a simple combat knife and then she also has very um, basic armor on her torso compared to the other Matorn. We have all these like large shoulder pads and whatnot. And because she's kind of seen as a newcomer, um, I also kind of wanted to make her seem somewhat naive in a way, which is why I gave her a very uh, happy looking mask. The Miru to me at least almost kind of looks like it's has like a very big uh, kind of grin across its face. So I felt like that kind of fit to make Ovelis look very happy and cheerful, which isn't exactly the case for the other Matorn who've been present in the village for much longer. Another thing I kind of wanted to mention about Wivalis' design as well is that compared to the other Matorn, she's kind of uh, sneaky in a lot of ways. So I kind of had the thought to kind of redesign certain parts of her build to make her look kind of smaller and more sleek. And so while I didn't change the actual design of the torso build, I did go and kind of shorten the arms to make them look smaller and also gave her smaller size feet. It's a very uh, kind of small difference but I think it helps to kind of differentiate Wivalis from the other Matorn. And that factor of creating differentiation is kind of important, especially when you're creating mocks that all use the same general design, like with these Matorn. It's definitely very important to kind of find little ways in which you can make them stand out more amongst a group. Like with a lot of the original Bionicle sets, they kind of had this issue of them all essentially being the same, right? So if you have, for example, like Toa Metru Vakama, you essentially have the same build that's used by all the other Toa Metru. The only difference really is just the mask and the weapon and that's it. It's like, you know, two pieces and the colors. Which I guess when it comes to, you know, official Bionicle sets, you kind of have to do that sometimes because obviously I imagine it's a lot cheaper to just do what essentially is just producing the same toy six times. But with Mox, you kind of have the opportunity to branch out a bit more and experiment with a certain design that you've come up with.
All right, so now we have arrived at Takrai. With Takrai, I kind of saw the opportunity to kind of make him fit in a lot with sort of the environment that these Matorn come from, which is known for being very harsh and unforgiving, especially for smaller, more feeble creatures like the Matoran, right? And because of that sort of harshness, the cry has kind of embodied this mindset of being very uh, resourceful and clever, kind of, you know, has survival instincts that he's, you know, learned over time. And because he's kind of so focused on the preservation of himself and the village that he comes from, he is kind of known and personality to be very distant and aloof and so that most directly you can kind of be seen in his design through of course his bow which is a distanced weapon and also gave him a Kanoe Akaku for that same reason as well. The Akaku of course is most famously worn by Toa Kopaka who is also a very um he has a very cold personality right and because that mask is so synonymous with Kopaka it kind of evokes the same vibe for Decry as well. The uh, the color choice was also an important decision I made on Decry as well. It was, it was a very uh, deliberate one because since Decry wields a bow for his weapon, he's kind of known to engage situations from very far away. And because of that, he does a lot of kind of lurking in the shadows, kind of watching over his teammates while they kind of deal with things more directly. And so because he kind of likes to blend in with his environment in certain ways, I kind of gave him colors that would allow him to do that. So you know, because it's a very natural jungle environment that he's coming from. I, of course, gave him black and green because, you know, that would kind of match the environment the best. Another cool thing about Takrai, I think, is um, kind of the amount of features I was able to kind of add to his weapons. Of course, since it's a bow and arrow, it, he does a lot more than just kind of swing it around, so you can kind of add different, I don't know, kind of moving bits on it, like the uh, the drawstring. And for the, the arrow, I also kind of added a quiver onto the back of Takrai's torso using just a little cloth piece. There's nothing really too special about the, uh, the quiver because it's just a uh, cloth piece that's kind of been wrapped around the arrow and it gets held onto Decry's back with a rubber band. But I think that's kind of just a cool little detail and kind of a fun way to store Decry's weapons. And in case people are wondering, yes, you can technically fire the arrow from the bow. Um, there is a small clip piece on the arrow, which allows you to kind of slot it into the drawstring. Though I will say it is not accurate at all in the, uh, like if you pull back the rubber band, which is used to create the drawstring, if you pull that back too much, it has a tendency to get untied from the holes at either end of the bow, and it can get undone, which oftentimes is kind of annoying to have to redo if it does get undone like that.
All right, so now we have arrived at the final Matoran we're going to be covering in this video. That, of course, is Gokren. I'd say that out of all of these Matoran, Gokren has by far the most uh, complex and thorough design. So, needless to say, we're probably going to be here a while. The arms on Gokren are kind of a unique design because, um, for one, between the two arms they are kind of asymmetrical, of course. And also, um, on the right arm, Gokren has an armor plate that's held on with a rubber band. Essentially, it's kind of following the same design philosophy I had with Terei and his spear, which also just has a random kind of rubber band wrapped around it. So, in Gokren's case, what it was kind of meant to represent are kind of straps or whatever that are helping to hold on that armor piece. So, instead of that being an actual armor plate that is, you know, ingrained in his armor as a Matoran, and instead is like an external extra piece of armor that he's kind of added onto his body. And since Gokren is kind of known to be the lead blacksmith in the Matoran village, it's likely that Gokren also crafted that himself. Another thing I kind of had to change up on Gokren specifically, um, because he uses a Metru head instead of a Mata head, was the uh, the way that, of course, the head connects to the body. With the regular design that's used by the other Matoran, that is meant to accommodate the Mata head. So when you swap that out for a Metru head, the Metru head sits like way too low on uh, the torso, and it often gets in the way when you're trying to move it around. If there's one annoying thing about the Kanoe Garai, which is the mask that Gokren wears, is that it's completely incompatible with, you know, older head styles, right? Because it's the only mask that doesn't connect like an actual mask. It connects via a axle beam going across the top, kind of like how a uh, paraka head connects. And that kind of leads to a lot of challenges because, you know, you kind of have to find different ways to cover up the front, and of course you're locked into using a metro head. So for Gokren, I kind of had to slightly alter that area of the torso to make it look better and also function better. This here is also kind of a cool um, design choice that's used across all five of the Matoran that I haven't really talked about until now, and that is using brick-built structures to kind of fill in certain areas of the torso. So as you can kind of see on Gokren, I'm using these little constructions with those uh, modified 1x2 plates and the studs to kind of fill in his sides. And essentially what that does is it just, you know, helps to fill out the torso more and um, prevent there from being too many gaps in the construction.
And now this here is probably one of the most uh, memorable aspects of Gokrin's build, at least in my opinion, which of course is the head design. Back when I was first getting into mocking, one of the things I always kind of used to pride myself in was creating really unique and interesting head designs. And this head design for Gokrin was kind of a product of that. It's been modified slightly since I first created it, but the same general design is still there with the, uh, the Mari visor piece and the 2015 armor add-on to kind of create this kind of almost helmet respirator thing that's kind of formed around the front of the Kanoe Garai. When using the Kanoe Garai, it's always kind of necessary to fill in that front area of the mask with something. And when I first created this head design, I kind of wanted to find a creative and interesting way to go about doing that. So this kind of is the, the final part of Gokrin, which is the, the weapons. Um, so I guess first I'll kind of talk about his turret. Gokrin's turret weapon is kind of cool because um, it attaches straight to his back and, you know, it allows for very easy storage. If there's one thing I kind of want to improve about a lot of my mocks is to kind of give them more weapon storage in general. You know, of course, without um, kind of sacrificing their looks. And I think Gokrin does a pretty good job at finding a balance between 
you know, his looks and also providing storage space for his weapons. The kind of backpack section of the, uh, the turret also kind of features a little area to hold uh, Gokrin's forging tool. Of course, as the lead blacksmith for the Matoran village, Gokrin kind of carries that around and um, that's what he uses to create weapons and tools for the other Matoran that are members of his village. And I think the whole backpack thing also kind of plays into Gokrin's personality a bit because um, in the universe, I kind of imagine him being very kind of grungy and disorganized a lot of the time. So, you know, he's kind of just carrying like all this kind of junk on his back, which normally would kind of weigh people down, but he doesn't really mind it because of course it's his stuff and he needs to have it with him at all times. It's kind of stuff like that that makes me feel like Gokrin has some of the most character out of all my Matoran since, um, you know, he's also the most complex. While complexity on its own doesn't really, doesn't always necessarily matter that much, it can help to cram a lot more detail into a mock, which can help to kind of, um, you know, express its character a lot more. And I think that's something I did pretty well with Gokrin overall. But yeah, we're wrapping up the last sections of Gokrin's build right now. And since he's the last Matoran, that will be the last one done for this video. So yeah, with that, that's going to be all for this episode of Mock Talks. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Did you enjoy the video? Then do your duty and give it a like. Also, if you're feeling generous, then why not embrace Unity and subscribe for more content just like this. If you've already done those things, then achieve your destiny by joining my Discord server linked in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.